Now, these parts consist of more or less the heart of your Bolex. This is the drag bell, which I cleaned up and polished, get rid of any burrs on the inside. Drag bell and or brake drum. This is the part that stands still and mounted in the frame of the camera. This is the dynamic part. This is the actual governor. Now the way this works is it's driven by the camera through this gear here. This little slot is when you rotate the speed dial, that slot will take and change the relationship between these springs, that lever, and this weight. So that looks like is sort of that, and there's the weight. So when these pieces are together, this little arm held back by the spring but forced out by the weight is what regulates the speed of the camera. Now when we are down in this position the arm has the longest leverage on the little brake pad that's inside the drum and so that gives the little weight here its most force that it can apply. So, and then vice versa, when it's spun, the speed dial spun all the way down, now the spring is at its strongest point, and the lever has its least amount of mechanical advantage, and that's when it runs 64 frames a second. I used to take and try and match these little weights. I brought a reloading scale down. I used to try and match the weights to within a few grains of each other, but it didn't seem, to, the camera didn't seem to care. So now all I generally do is sand down the faces of them to make sure that there's no burrs on the slot for them to get hung up. And uh, this is how it sort of works. It does that. And obviously when it's in this position, the spring is very strong. And so that's how that goes. It spins rather rapidly inside the brake drum, which is stationary. And that's what slows down the camera or speeds it up. And when that's screwed up, other than the spring being broken, the motor spring, that is the most critical part of your Bolex and fitting a new one to get where the size of those little pads there and the diameter of this little drum and the right lubricant is what will determine whether or not your Bolex is going to run 28 seconds at a good speed, 25 or 17 seconds and uh, it's a real I shouldn't say hit and miss, but in a way it is hit and miss. You just gotta, there's so many variables that you have to deal with to try and get it to work right. And I'll show you the biggest improvement Bolex made in the governor. This is the latest style governor. And in a moment when he gets out of the soup, I'll show you an old style governor. Now this is a comparison between the older style and the newer style. The newer style showed up with the square bottom one-to-one -one chef cameras, although I think there was a short period of time where you could have had a non-one-to-one -one shaft square bottom camera that had the old style governor in it. Now the difference lies in the fact that this much of it is the same. It has the same pads, same weights, same sliding spring and weight assembly to change the speed of the camera. But the difference is that 
the drag bell or brake drum, as you can see here, is mounted solid to its mounting bracket. It doesn't give. And so you not only have to get the spring tension, the weight, and the size of the pad correct, but that bell had to be perfectly lined up with the shaft in order for it to run smoothly and consistently. And the difference they made was on the later model cameras, see how much larger the mounting bracket is? And that's how you can tell when you're buying your Bolex. But these two holes on the bottom of your camera on the inside are far apart. That's a floating governor. You want that. Those parts are available, much better running, and much easier to tune camera. However, if those two holes are close together, like on this plate, versus this plate, you don't want that. These are a bitch to tune. You can't get the bells anymore. Not to mention other gears inside are, are different sizes than standard. So again, the difference lies in the fact that this governor, when you assemble it and bolt the plate down, it can center itself. There's a little ball and socket joint there and a little spring that holds it in place. And so that saves you a lot of time because it'll just it'll find its center if all the pads aren't exactly the same size and it wants to wobble a little bit I should say same height or OD between the three then that works better and uh, I had made when I was still fixing the fixed bell cameras I made myself this little fixture here which once I mounted the bell onto the frame, I could, this is a governor shaft, I could stick it in the top pivot and then verify that it would fit in there. So I would have to bend and tweak the bottom bracket there to get it to accept the plug. And that lets me know that it's within a thou or so of being lined up. But again, I, I generally, we don't buy those cameras anymore, and uh, I don't fix them anymore. They're just, too many parts inside are different. So, that there is the heart of your, your Bolex. So, we'll see where we'll go from here. But that's the shiny new, well, it's actually not new. I just shined it up, cleaned it, got rid of all the burrs when you're working on them. Take a small file and make sure that there is no burr on this lip here because the speed adjust finger rides in that. And if there's a burr on there, it can catch and sort of screw with the speed of the camera. Other than that, that's about it. They used to lubricate these with dry molly powder, which I personally was never successful with. Uh, I stumbled upon a grease that was made by Ike for 16mm projectors. It was a molly powder with a uh, petroleum-based light grease that uh, I would use everywhere in the camera on all the gears and the spindles, and uh, it was spectacular. Uh, however, Ike no longer offers it since they no longer make projectors. In the last few years, I've been on a quest for a new grease. You know, and uh, it appears I've stumbled upon something here that I've only done a couple of cameras with, but from the hoopla about it, it seems spectacular. This is Slipstream Weapons Grease. It's black like the Molly powder from Molly Grease from Ike, but the difference being that this stuff, according to the manufacturer, has nano diamond particles in it. 
that works like miniature little ball bearings. And it's uh, all the rave amongst uh, weapons tuners. And I also use their oil. It's relatively expensive stuff. You know, but I'm dealing with cameras that have to run through a variety of temperature extremes and speed extremes. The uh, bottle of oil and a little tub of grease was about 30 bucks, which ain't bad. So I've got a couple of cameras that's glued up with that. And uh, I won't know how the parts look until I take them apart, but I do know that the Ike would look great after six years, seven years of being together.